Hello everybody, welcome to this week's update video. My name is Martin and I'm an Inkscape developer and I develop features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. Um, welcome to these updates where we share some of the work that's been going on inside the Inkscape project. But before we get into the details, I want to give a big shout out and a big thank you to all of my regular sponsors. Basically the way this works is that my work is paid for by you. Um, the users of Inkscape come together to essentially pay for my time as a contractor to work and program and organize and administrate a lot of the stuff that goes on on the Inkscape project. So I take these videos to tell you what I'm doing and also to thank you for your continued support. I would have to get all the work if it wasn't for your help. And also, I, th I think you wanna see Inkscape get better like I think that that's the that's the main goal that we're all trying to achieve. So um, yeah, let's get on to how we have made Inkscape better this week. Um, first of all, my engine work is currently on pause. It's not paused in terms of the work. I'm currently waiting for code reviews. So uh, the way the process works is, um, as an individual developer, you never want your work to be unreviewed. You never want to just ship directly without some other human being being able to look at it and confirm that you haven't gone crazy halfway through writing it. And so my engine work, while it's, um, I, I think that the access memory stuff that we talked about, I think three weeks ago, is is good and it should be merged. Um, I am waiting for uh, PBS to have some time available. He's a volunteer, so he spends his weekends essentially uh, helping with the Inkscape project. Um, but I'm waiting for him to be able to review it. Um, and this does mean that because Inkscape uh, has like a lot of volunteers and their time is precious, uh, we don't always, we're not able to sort of do all of the work in a straight line. Sometimes we just have to pause and wait for other parts of the project to catch up when it can. And then uh, hopefully we can continue the work late, later on. Um, this delay is minor, I think. Um, you know, I'm, I'm asking a lot because this engine work is, is pretty um, both advanced, complex, intricate, and uh, important because it's core to how Inkscape works, is rendering stuff to the screen and rendering stuff to bitmaps. Okay, so uh, while that's paused, though, what have I been doing? Do you remember how last week I said that I w really wanted to get into doing some UX work, uh, some like UI graphics stuff? Because I miss it. Like I'm, I, I, I like pro programming stuff that you stuff that users can see on on the screen, and so I spent this week um, looking at. Uh, getting into some of the the fill and stroke dialogue improvements that I need to be able to make in order to do the color work. Um, I need to be able to add uh, color space selectors and various other drop down boxes and things. Um, I started off focusing on the stroke dialogue though. Uh, the stroke style page on the fill and stroke dialogue has been a bit neglected over the past couple of years. And one of the ways that you can tell this is that Mykov, who has been um, programming the new object properties dialogue, that dialogue has some of the same widgets and some of the same elements, but it looks radically different. Um, much prettier, I would say, and more considered. Um, he's done some really good work there. And I wanted to make sure that that work was also present in the fill and stroke dialogue. Um, we have a little bit of a disagreement in that Mykov considers really that the fill and stroke dialogue should be just decommissioned in favor of the object properties work. But I, I think that that kind of design decision would require some data to back up the idea that the object properties dialogue could replace the fill and stroke dialogue entirely and that users would actually find it better. Uh, and, and enough users would actually find it better. It's not good enough that a section of users would find it better. And, and I don't think it would be fair to compare them in terms of their prettiness, because as I said, like Mykov has done some really good work in making it look really nice. So, um, so while we wait for user experience experiments and tests to confirm a decision on whether the fill and stroke dialogue should be decommissioned or not, and my personal opinion is that it shouldn't be, um, I am. Um, I've moved all of the design elements from the object properties into the stroke style. Um, a lot of the same um, CSS, a lot of the same balancing inside the screen. Um, I'm not entirely sure I've gotten it perfectly right, so uh, leave a comment below if you like the look of what of what you see. 
Um, and on top of that, I also wanted to fix a long-standing problem. So one of the first contributions that I made to Inkscape many, 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 many years ago was the, it was the paint order buttons. Um, I basically added buttons that allowed you to change the paint order. Before then, it wasn't possible to change the paint order in Inkscape at all. Um, the design decision that I took then was to have six individual buttons, and each one of those had an individual state. Um, whether the fill was painted first and then the stroke and then the markers or the markers were painted first and then the fill and then the stroke, etc, etc, right? Um, this is actually a really bad design. I mean, I feel it, but it's bad whenever I, I try and use it as a control. Uh, I can't imagine what like a normal user feels uh, that didn't actually make the buttons. Um, so in this case, I wanted a, a drag and drop solution. So I've constructed a new set of widgets that allow you to uh, reorder a stack of things and have a have a set of uh, basically the value is which order that they're in and I will need to do some user experience tests to confirm that this is better than the six buttons I think that it is um, but as I said before like you shouldn't just assume things you should actually test them uh, this should allow people to intuitively understand what is happening when they when they move these widgets around um, so that's uh, user experience work and that user I, UI prettiness work uh, goes into the stroke dialog that's been merged. That's really nice. Um, I'm also trying to work on some uh, standardization pro processes within the Inkscape code base with my carve and PBS and Tav and a bunch of other people about how we uh, make generic widgets so that they can be shared better between dialogues. So like if we have a dialog that has a very similar kind of control, our code base is a little bit sloppy in terms of how it's actually um, coding those generic widgets. And um, sometimes they're a little bit overcomplicated. Sometimes they're too baked in. Um, you know, we need some rules set down about like which directories you put your files in and, and what the rules are for these kinds of wid widgets. So that's an ongoing discussion that I'm going to be having with the rest of the developer team. And hopefully I'll be able to improve the uh, opacity widget that you see in the fill and stroke dialogue and the blur widget. We'll see We'll see how that goes. Um, okay, so some other U, UI stuff works. Basically, I wanted to do a design which I've been itching to do for a while, which is for the for the con canon canonical? No. conical gradient. Right. So you have a radial gradient, but um, Inkscape for a long time has had a mesh gradient, conical gradient option but it's hidden away, it's incredibly hard to control, and it needs desperate UX improvements. And so I put together a design which both shows what the current user experience is like for conical great gradients, and then um, expresses like how uh, on screen, both on canvas editing and in gradient dialogue editing should be for this kind of gradient. And essentially what we, what we wanna do is we wanna get away from the idea that the conical gradient should be edited as if it was a mesh gradient. Like it's a mesh gradient in the SVG, but that shouldn't matter to, to the user, right? The user expects to be able to edit it as, an, as a conical gra gra gradient. Um, so I put together a design. It's 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 a, This is very, very early state stages in terms of getting my ideas onto paper. And hopefully some other designers, maybe even you, would be interested to review it and see what you think. Maybe there's some better ways of, of being able to edit these kinds of elements, especially if you've seen this kind of thing done in other programs. I don't really have access to a lot of other design soft software. So a lot of the designs that I make per personally are kind of esoteric like they're weird right like because i i don't have experience of other pro programs um what else is going on oh okay so uh there's a bunch of stuff going on administratively um but yeah, it's not important enough for an update video uh the website's still under attack still trying to control um ai bots that are scraping it and I, oh it was my birthday so i took the day off for my birth birth birthday so I let's get into some of the work that's going on in the rest of the Inkscape project. Um, there's a lot of people that volunteer and work on Inkscape. Um, and I wanted to highlight specifically uh, FT Omara uh, from Egypt. They're a Google Summer of Code student who has finally merged and finally completed their recolor artwork dialogue. Um, this is a very exciting feature because it's something that allows you to basically select a bunch of objects, see all of the colors that are involved. 
right? So every single color that's in, inside one of the gradients, every single color that's involved in a fill or a pattern, um, and be, be able to select them, see how many things are being colored in that way, and then recolor them. And uh, the, it's important for my work in the CMYK stuff because I'm going to be um, using this dialog to essentially allow you to see what objects are in RGB and change them to CMYK uh, collectively. Uh, maybe even some automated pro processes or some guided pro processes um, because it allows you to select things according to their colors. I, I may dis, uh, uh, disambiguate, is that a word? I may uh, split out text as its own kind of thing to recolor in the work that I do, but this is a really, really important piece of work and I wanted to thank the Google Summer of Student uh, code student for like for keeping on this right like the the, the process of google google summer of code is finished but they've they've uh, remained committed towards getting this work completed and making sure that it's of the highest quality our merge requests can sometimes be a bit brutal because for big big work we kind of expect people to step up and actually achieve a higher quality um if possible. We'll certainly try and help students um, and mentor them and, and guide them. And that's part of the mentoring process, I think. So uh, yeah, the, um, please uh, thank the st students in the comments. I think that they should be praised for their tenacity in this work. And um, yeah, I think that's pr probably it for this week. Um, there's some other stuff going on. I'll save it for next week. Um, as always, please consider supporting my work on Patreon and LibrePay. Um, please, uh, you can subscribe to me on um, Masterdom if you'd like to follow some of the conversations that, that I have online. And um, thank you all for watching.